November is National Adoption Month, so what better time than now to share the story of our first adoption? and welcome back to Faith Foster Fire Life. If this is your first time finding our channel, welcome. If it's not your first time, then welcome back. We are happy to have you. On our channel, we talk about our Christian faith, our foster care and adoption journeys, as well as what it's like to live as a fire family. My husband, Pat, is a firefighter and has been for over two decades. And so we share what it's like to live the ups and downs of the fire life. We are also a homeschooling family, so you'll find content about homeschool as well. In today's video, I wanted to share the beautiful and miraculous story of how our son Joseph came to be part of our family. Back in 2015, my husband, as well as our two sons, had already been a foster family for about five years. And at that time, we had fostered about 19, 20 children. And that sounds like a lot in a short amount of time, and it is. But the reason um, that number seems high is because our goal was always to help keep sibling groups together. So we wouldn't um, just take one child at a time. Usually it was two to three children at a time. So at that time in 2015, we had just um, actually moved from our hometown to the town we live in now. We had bought a new home that actually turned out to be a huge fixer upper, which we were not anticipating. And we were fostering five children. We had our two biological sons, and we also had our two foster daughters who had at that point been with us for about two years. And we had recently taken in a placement of three brothers. So we had our five foster children, our two biological children, uh, seven kids in a house that we were literally remodeling from the, floor, the ground up. So just to fast forward a little bit, uh, later in 2015, the uh, three boys that we had were reunified with their mom, which was awesome. And um, we still had our foster daughters and they were in the process of being adopted by another family, but it was just taking a little bit longer than the normal process. So they were still with us um, and we were still actively you know, fostering. But at that time, we had just gone through so much um, stress and life change as a family that we decided after the girls got adopted, we would um, stop fostering. So once the sibling set of the three boys were reunified, we told our foster agency that we did not want to take any more placements. We were just going to foster um, through the, the time the girls were with us. And then once they were adopted, we would be done and we were going to take a break. We didn't really know what that looked like, but we needed a break. So. Our agency that we've worked with is a trauma-informed uh, private agency. We are all licensed by the state that we live in, um, but there are private agencies that kind of specialize in different types of foster care placements. And so our foster care um, agency was one that dealt with children who had known trauma, um, that maybe had multiple placements prior to coming to us. And so we had like a, um, I guess a next level type of care that we could provide for them because of the training that we were um, afforded and that we kept up with and the supports that we had through our agency. I would never <laughs> take credit um, for being able to care for these children on our own. We did it with a lot of support. So, um, Knowing that, I called our agency and when I told them that we needed to take a break, of course, you know, there's such a demand for foster parents, right? They never want to hear that you're, you, you're taking a break or you're done fostering because they know every day they're getting phone calls for children and they want to have open homes for the children to go to. So a lot of times um, agencies or the state will um, try to talk you out of that decision. And so I kind of flippantly said to our agency, um, you know, if you get a call for a newborn baby, you can give us a call. And let me back up a little bit. Um, that is not something that we always wanted to do as far as only take infants. There are some foster homes that they, from the get-go, have, you know, they want to only foster infants or babies and they put that on their foster care um, application and you know that's the kind of placements they get. We were not one of those families. We were an emergency placement family. We were a trauma-informed family. We normally took kids who were older. Um, 
like grade school older is what I mean, not teenagers, because our biological sons were um, not even teenagers yet. So we never took kids older than them. But um, so when I told our agency that if you get a call for a newborn, um, we'll, we'll take them, we'll take the baby, because I honestly didn't think that they would get a call for a newborn. Um, we had fostered babies in the past. Actually, our very first foster child was a baby, um, and he was reunified with his mom. But, um, and then we had other uh, sibling groups that there was a baby included in that sibling group. But for the most part, our agency did not get calls for infants. Those calls typically went to the traditional um, state uh, licensed families or other agencies that took infants on a regular basis. So I kind of thought, you know, if I tell them that um, only call us if you get a call for a newborn, then our phone would not be ringing and I would get the breather that I needed. And um, the other part too was we had been fostering um, older children with, you know, severe trauma behaviors. And I honestly, my whole family, not just I, but we all needed a break from that type of parenting and that type of caregiving. So I kind of thought, well, even if they call us for a baby, then um, it's different type of care than what we had been providing. So make a long story short, <laughs> the story is not short, but um, two days later, my phone rings and she, the uh, uh, placement person at our agency says, well, you put your order in, we just got a call for a newborn baby and he needs to be picked up in a couple of days. You said yes, and I was dumbfounded. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, I, God, I, I did not really think, you know, you know, be careful what you wish for <laughs> um, because you might just get it. And um, spoiler alert, it was a good thing. So, we took the call and we said yes, because we said we would say yes. And I thought, you know what, this is gonna be so different than what we have been doing. We're okay with this. I'm okay with getting up in the middle of the night as long as I'm not dealing with um, kids who want to run away and jump out the second story. <laughs> and I, I laugh at that. It's not something to be funny about trauma at all. Um, just that, you know, where I was at at that time was burnt out from that kind of parenting. So, um, we took the call and we said yes. And so here's another little little thing that was a God wink or a little thing saying, you know what? There's a reason why you made that phone call and why you put those stipulations in place. Um, as I'm gathering the information, of course, I'm asking about the baby and, you know, does he have any medical needs and um, what's his situation and uh, what's his name? And um, when she told me his name, his name is Joseph. His name is Joseph Rocco, that's his middle name. Um, I kind of stopped in my tracks and I just had like a flutter in my heart because um, I'd always loved the name Joseph since I was a little kid. Um, I just was partial to that name. And our other sons, our, our biological sons are named Patrick and Connor. And so um, the name Joseph just fit in with that. And actually, I wanted to name our oldest son Joseph, but my husband did not want to, and he wanted a junior. So our oldest son is named after my husband. And um, so when he said, you know, when they said the name, it just warmed my heart. It was like, oh, our little baby Joseph. <laughs> and um, at that call, it was a regular foster placement. There was no indication, no talking about adoption. And I'll have to stop there for a second because I wanna clarify that our family never started doing foster care in order to adopt. Um, that is a reason some people get into doing foster care is because they want it to lead to adoption. Um, for our family, that was never the plan. Um, our uh, sole goal was to be an interim family for children who needed it. And the ultimate goal would to be, uh, have them reunified with their birth family or, you know, adopted by another family. So um, that was never on our radar, just to clear that up, that wasn't the goal of taking um, in any placement of any age. So when we went to the hospital uh, a couple of days later, and he um, had all of his medical clearances done and all of that kind of stuff, we went in and we met Joseph for the first time. And so we got to bring this beautiful little baby home and, um, 
He was just the blessing we didn't even know we needed. Honestly, I thought I was burnt out, but God was just making room in my heart and in our home for Joseph to be able to come. Because honestly, the way foster care goes, if I hadn't put those stipulations in, then the night the other boys were reunified, we could have gotten a call that very night and said yes to them. And then we wouldn't have room in our family for a, a new baby and they would have never called us. So I 100% fully believe that this was God's hand in forming our family before we even knew it. And so to fast forward a little bit, um, Joseph's foster care placement went very typical as most of them did as far as um, his birth parents were given visits, weekly visits, um, and the, the initial goal was reunification. Um, his birth family did have a history with DCYF, so that's the Department of Children, Youth, and Families in Rhode Island where we live. And so, um, you know, the birth parents did have a history with them, with their previous children. Um, this was, Joseph was their first child together, but birth mom has um, previous children and I'm not 100% sure about birth dad. That was never made clear to us if he had any previous children or if he did, if they were with um, you know their biological mom. We're still not clear about that. But we did know that birth mom um, did have a history with DCYF and um, so Joseph's half biological siblings um, would are uh, adopted by another family. So we did know that. So, um, you know, the typical placement happened where we were caring for Joseph as normal. He was perfectly healthy. Thank God, you know, he was protecting him while in, throughout her whole pregnancy and he was born perfectly healthy and um, he had visits with them. And um, not to get into all the details of what happened, you know, through those months, but we um, very quickly felt something different. We felt something very, very different about Joseph. Um, I would say within a couple of weeks. And I will say, we, like I said, we've had babies before. A lot of people think that Joseph was our first baby and that's why we fell in love with him and we, why we wanted to adopt him. And like the older kids, you know, already had a bond with their birth families and that's why we didn't want to adopt. And that's just not the case. We had other babies um, as foster placements before and never felt like they were to be adopted by us. But something very different about Joseph and um, usually when my foster kids would go on play, uh, visits with their birth families, um, if there was like a, um, a level of danger or maybe I thought mom or dad wasn't really um, caring for them well in that visit, I would have a, a little nervousness, a little um, anxiety around it. But, um, you know, I knew they were supervised visits, and so I felt fine about it, and I was happy that the kids got to spend time with their birth family. But with Joseph, it was very different. Every time he would go on a visit, um, I felt the way I would um, when, you know, my oldest was born, I was a new mom, and anybody who babysat him, I would just be so nervous at, that they weren't going to do it right or something, you know? And so I had that same feeling with Joseph. And I knew, you know, it was a supervised visit. There was never any indication that they were going to do anything wrong or hurt him or anything like that. I just, it just felt so different. And um, so, Fast forward for the first year and a half of his life, that's how um, his foster care placement went, which um, is very typical. And then usually by law around a year, year and a half, the courts are supposed to make a decision whether or not this placement is going to um, be reunified, the child's gonna be reunified, or if they're going to terminate parental rights and seek out adoptive parents. And so it was around that year and a half mark that um, the department reached out and asked us officially if we were a pre-adoptive family. And it was just so crazy because all those years and all those children prior, we were like, no, 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 we're not, nope. Um, and we didn't hesitate for a minute. We said, yes, we are pre-adoptive. We would love for Joseph to be part of our family. And um, that was our heart's desire <laughs> from the time he was a couple of weeks old, we knew. And um, so, that's exactly what happened. Eventually, um, it was determined that his birth parents were not meeting 
the parenting goals and um, mental health goals and all the different things that they had to do to show that they could, um, you know, parent him adequately and safely. Um, and so uh, they did move to terminate parental rights. And um, so then we ha were faced with, um, are we doing an open adoption or a closed adoption? And sometimes when you choose a closed adoption, um, birth parents can fight that in the court system. And what happens is that whole time that you're fighting the closed adoption, like trying to make it a closed adoption, that can linger in the court system for years. And that whole time that it's lingering, that child's still considered a foster child. So then the birth parents are still awarded um, their visits. So it really drags out the process and it really doesn't allow the child and the adoptive family to fully bond um, the way that they would if the visits were cut down to, you know, maybe a couple of times a year. Um, it's a little more co uh, complicated than that, but I don't really want to get into all the details of that part in this video. Um, so what we decided to do was to mediate with his birth parents. And so we sat, um, we sat separately with a mediator and we told them what we thought was appropriate. And they sat with the mediator and said what they wanted. And then we just came to an agreement. So we did um, do an open adoption. And the other part of that is that I knew he had half siblings out there. And um, as far as I know, they're local to us. So um, it, you know, they're not across the country or anything difficult to come in contact with. And so I thought down the line, um, when he's older, if, you know, he ever wants to reach out or if they want to reach out to us or they're, you know, they want to start some kind of relationship, then we wanted that to be more feasible. So um, we had a, a few different reasons for doing that open adoption. And so we agreed upon a few visits per year and they would be supervised by us and um, very similar to our second adoption, which you may have already watched on our channel. It's um, just this last summer, we adopted our second son, Daniel, um, through our foster care journey. And um, so his, his adoption video is um, on our channel and I'll link it below. And so there's, their situations really mirrored each other. Basically what we went through with Joseph is almost exactly how Daniel's adoption happened. Um, but the only difference is uh, after we adopted Joseph, he had one visit with his birth parents um, and we hadn't had a relationship with them prior to the adoption happening. When he would go on his visits, a caseworker would pick him up from our house, bring him to the visit and then bring him back. And so we didn't even meet them until mediation. So um, the first time that we were all in the same room together, um, birth parents and myself and my husband was at the first visit after adoption. And um, Joseph was very bonded to us. We are mom and dad. We had been that mom and dad to him since day one, of course. And so when we went to the visit, he didn't want to go with them. And he was only not even two. Um, yeah, not quite two. Um, no, he was just over two, I'm sorry, because our adoption date got messed up and we actually had to delay it till after his second birthday. But so he was just about two years old. And so he really was confused, I think. He didn't really know why he was expected to go spend time with the his birth parents. They were kind of a little bit like strangers, kind of more like, um, like a family acquaintance. And that we, it would be odd for a two year old just to be like, here, go play with these people that you only see a few times. Um, and so I think and this is speculation on my part, that um, after that first visit, birth mom and dad saw how bonded Joseph was to us and how um, difficult visits going forward would be. Um, I know birth mom really struggled that day, um, that he didn't want to go to her. And um, I had to actually talk with her a little bit at the beginning of the visit and she was crying and it broke my heart. And I just, you know, said, look, you only have a little, an hour, two hours tops here to, to spend time with him. Just, you know, you're going to have to deal with the, the rejection later and just spend the time with him. You know, this little bit of time you have for this play date, just, just spend it with him. And so she did, she dried up her tears and she went and played with him and stuff. And 
So the next visit that was scheduled, um, they said they were coming and we went and they never showed up and we called and um, honestly, that was four years ago and we've not heard from them since. So I have to assume um, that that was done out of love. And, um, you know, a lot of people may watch this and think, well, maybe their lives went off the rails or something like that. And that may be the case. We don't know. Um, but I want to assume that um, they love their, their son enough to see what was best for him. And that going forward, maybe it was too painful for them to go to visits. And um, maybe they just wanted the, uh, Joseph to um, have his family and leave it at that. I don't know. Again, it's been years and um, so we don't know what happened there. Um, as far as I know, Joseph doesn't remember. Um, he doesn't really talk about it. <laughs> he's six. He's six now and he understands adoption. And so he went through the whole process with us with Daniel and understood like a foster baby came and then um, he going on visits with the birth parents. He watched all that happen with Daniel. So he does understand it to that level. Um, but, you know, we take things as they come and as we feel are appropriate for his age. So, um, yeah, so that is the story of how we became foster parents, which not intending to adopt led to the adoption of our first son, Joseph, and how God just worked out all of the details and placed him in the family that he was intended to be in. And um, we are just beyond grateful to God for that, for him knowing better than us. And, um, you know, that we were, for whatever reason, um, gave out these strange stipulations that we thought were getting us off the hook. And in reality, God was working something much bigger and much greater in our lives. And I can tell you, you guys, if you've, you know, if this is your first video, go back and watch some of our other videos. Joseph is in a lot of them. And he is just like the cutest, smartest, witty. Um, he's so hysterically funny and just um, clever. Oh my gosh. I, there's just a million things I could say about him that are glowing, you know, and everyone who meets him just loves Joseph. And he is a huge blessing to our family. And I honestly could not imagine life in this home without him. Um, so I'm so grateful to God that he made him and he brought him to us. And um, so I'm, I, as I've been talking here, you've been seeing a few pictures of him as a baby and growing up a little bit through the time he was in foster care technically and he never felt that way to us he never felt like a foster child to us but um and so i did want to end this video with a little montage of joseph through the years and you can see how that cute little face with those big brown eyes um what he looks like now so guys thank you so much for watching stick around to the end so you can see joseph and remember before anything else love god and love others <laughs>